Welcome back to the F1 2018 career mode here guys and you join me for what feels like the last track I actually enjoy on the calendar, the Mexican Grand Prix, a nice high speed autodrome that I can't really pronounce the name of, but nonetheless it is a very successful one, it's where we picked up our drivers championship in season 3 on F1 2017. Um, and I think it should suit the car quite nicely. A nice high-speed first sector, a high-speed middle sector with some flowing corners. I think with enough of the updates that we've done this year, the car should be bolted enough to the ground. And then a slow, technical stadium section, which I've always struggled on uh, since this track came back to the calendar in 2015. But nonetheless, a good circuit for us. Hopefully, we can get a good result as I always tend to go pretty nicely around here. So we're jumping into qualifying, another one of the tracks that has the Hypersoft tyre available. Five minutes left in the session. Our uh, current fastest lap has us P11. Let's see if we can make any kind of improvements as we are max and overtake mode. 218 miles an hour as we hit the brakes into turn one. Turning in initially too early, had to turn out of the corner, then back into it. And then my first sector hasn't actually been as good as my best one so far. So I'm about a tenth and a half down through the first chicane. Usually you can make up quite a lot of time on those curves. We cross the sector. is still uh, two and a half tenths up on the provisional pole time. We are the strongest car through the first sector. And you see through the second chicane, we're now over three tenths up on our delta. Now the car's running on some worn parts. You might be able to hear some clunking on deceleration. I'm looking, I'm toying with the idea of having to swap out uh, an engine for... Um, for the final two races of the season. But here we go through the middle sector, the fast right, left out of the car, wanting to snap away from me. We're over half a second up on our personal best time. And our over six tenths as we come through using all the track available. We've gone very wide on the right hander and then ride the curb to get the car as wide as we can to turn in as tight as possible. Then just use it, utilizing all the space we've got through the penultimate corner and the final corner is just an acceleration zone. Max hot lap mode up to the line, P6. Half second down, so you can see that the stadium sector did cost me some time. But nonetheless, it put me P6 at the time, P7 uh, at the end of qualifying. So Hamilton on pole from Vettel, Bottas, Verstappen and Ricardo both beat out Raikkonen. But top six is as expected. Then you have myself in seventh, uh, just shy of two tenths quicker than Perez. And then Hulkenberg and Sainz in ninth and tenth for Renault. A Haas 11 and 12, Alonso up in 13th. Stroll down in 14th, the Williams is dropping back a little bit with Sorokin, Gasly, Hartley, Vandoorne, Ericsson and Leclerc rounding out the rest of the top 20. Let's get into the Mexican Grand Prix. The air may be thin here in Mexico City, the atmosphere is anything but. The crowd have been chanting and singing, not just this afternoon, but throughout the entire weekend. There's a great love for Formula One here, and no small amount of expectation. Let's hope today's Grand Prix can meet it. It's a 2.6 mile lap here in Mexico with incredible top speeds of around 220 miles per hour and an average lap speed of 121 miles per hour. 17 corners here, 10 to the right and 7 to the left, with a spectacular view for the sellout crowd from the technical stadium section in the final sector. See if you can make it a points finish today. It's kind of what I'm hoping to do, Jeff. Hoping for a points finish. It's looking like a two-stopper. Hypers onto ultras onto ultras. Um, the one-stop could have potentially been possible. Hypers through to supers. Uh, but it's just not really the strategy that's going to keep us up there. Keeping us up with the top guys as we have five red lights for the Mexican Grand Prix. Lights are out and away we go off the start line. You can see I'm running some warm parts as my battery doesn't even charge to 100% anymore. Perez goes over to the right of us. Lots of dust being kicked up offline by the Ferrari of Raikkonen. The top six all jostling for position. Vettel has taken the lead. The two Mercedes going side by side. Verstappen, Bottas, Hamilton. We're going to take the outside route and then hopefully cut to the inside versus Daniel Ricciardo. Take a lot of curb. We have to go wide for the second part of the chicane, but on traction we get it up into fifth place. That's us ahead of the Ferrari of Raikkonen and the Red Bull of Daniel Ricciardo. And then both Mercedes once again side by side into the second chicane. Bottas is going to have the inside line versus Hamilton. We get very close to the back of Max Verstappen. Bottas can't make the move just yet going around. 
the double right-hander and then gets squeezed out. Hamilton then retains second. Bottas third, Verstappen fourth and ourselves in fifth position. And by the end of the second lap, Verstappen has built a little bit of a gap with Sebastian Vettel setting the pace early on. We cross the line. Raikkonen up into sixth place now. DRS is now applicable as of this lap. And that's going to help uh, us either attacking the car ahead or the car behind. Uh, but it looks as if Raikkonen and Ricardo are too busy battling behind us uh, as we then try and close in on the cars ahead of us there. We set a personal best last lap around, but Verstappen is going to try and make a move on Valtteri Bottas for third position here into turn one. And indeed, he's done it. He's gone very wide on the brakes, probably because the extra speed he was carrying with Slipstream, probably a bit of Rich Mix, and DRS as well. But that's Bottas down to fourth. Very next lap, though. We're going to open up our DRS, which we did have. It doesn't look like I've used it. I clearly didn't think I was within a second. I've noticed it now, actually. But uh, Bottas makes a move around the outside of a Verstappen before the braking zone. So these two are exchanging positions, right and left. So now, apparently, we have DRS damage. Uh, our DRS damage is locked down. So even if we were within a second of the car ahead, we can't use our DRS. It almost looks slightly open there as well, but... Yeah, we weren't able to use our DRS, not that we were within a second this time around, as Verstappen makes a move around the outside of Bottas, that moves to the inside, but then Bottas gets the inside back through turn three, they're still side by side, the Red Bull and the Mercedes, they head down towards the end of the first sector, and towards the second chicane, Bottas with the superior engine power, is he going to get past the Red Bull? Yes, he does, back up and retains that third position, but those two fighting kept putting me with a potential chance at uh, coming back at him. As we're now on to lap 7 now, we're coming in in a couple of laps time as Bottas makes a move again versus Verstappen. Verstappen trying to hold the move through the inside. Can Bottas retain the position? It looks like he has on the exit, but Verstappen now could potentially get a run into the second chicane down the inside. But the Mercedes engine, like I've said before, much superior grunt. But Verstappen, classic late breaking from, breaking from the Dutchman, tries to then hold it around the outside. This battle's gone on for half the lap of the Mexican Autodrome so far. Verstappen's got the move done. He pinched Bottas on the curb. Similar to Hamilton first lap around and Bottas there has had to drop back. But now Bottas again on lap eight trying to overtake Verstappen. Verstappen holds the position through turns one, two and three. But then Bottas can sit in the slipstream with DRS and try and make a move on the Dutchman into the second chicane. I was just sitting back and it, it kept me in touch with these guys but they just weren't going slow enough for me to catch them frustratingly. Verstappen has held the position through the second chicane and Bottas there has to yield there going into the double right hander and I was just saving fuel trying to obviously elongate my tyres my front end though is starting to slip away from me Verstappen is in the pits uh, as well as one of the Ferraris that is Sebastian Vettel going to the ultra soft tyres so that's their first pit stop of the Grand Prix being done and Perez has come in we're on for another lap so Bottas into second place we're in third that must mean the other Mercedes of Hamilton is still in the lead. Indeed, he is. Daniel Ricciardo is out for an additional lap. So this is the lap we're going to be coming in. So we need to try and have the best in-lap possible. Can we try and overcut Max Verstappen? That is essentially the question as I've clipped the bollard going. And Bottas has gone round again. Bottas really extending the life of his Hypersofts. Could he try that one stop that I was talking about earlier? Nonetheless, we're in the pits. Come on, Force India boys. Don't cost me a position versus Daniel Ricciardo. 2.5 seconds. Excellent stuff by the Force India crew. Keeps us ahead of Daniel Ricciardo on the ultra soft tyre. Hamilton is out the pits. There goes Vettel, obviously. So he's lost the lead to Hamilton coming through some of the traffic, actually. There's Stroll, Ericsson. Ricciardo's coming out. Verstappen is now only coming down the straight. You see him in the mirror there. We pull ahead of him. We've overcut Max Verstappen successfully. While he was in the traffic, we've managed to get through, akin to... Uh, the real-life Singapore Grand Prix, where cars coming in early just got caught in the traffic, and the overcut successfully managed to work for once. So that's put Verstappen there, behind, potentially behind Bottas, and definitely behind me. Well, that'll be definitely behind Bottas then, I suppose, unless Bottas has a shocker of an in-lap. But here we go, Marcus Ericsson, the car ahead of us, very slow into the braking zone for the uh, stadium section. So we just send it down the inside, and then we've got Sorokin, Hartley, and Stroll all ahead of us. They started on ultra soft tyres, so they're going to be going longer into this Grand Prix as Vettel setting the pace on a 16-7. But Stroll and Hartley, thankfully, peel into the pits. That's going to release Sorokin and then release me behind him to use DRS, not shouldn't really have to use too much fuel, but we're going to bump out to Rich and High, and there is Valtteri Bottas coming out the pits, he's overcut Verstappen, and kept ahead of me, but then Sorokin leaves the door, and we send it down the inside, Bottas went to the ultra soft tyre, so no, 
He's not trying the one-stop strategy here today. He is definitely committed to a two with that tyre choice. But that puts Bottas there up into a fifth position currently on the road. I believe both has cars, but Bottas apparently has an issue according to Jeff. He's driving strangely, I think. I don't know if you saw it closely enough. I think Bottas has come out of the pits, maybe driven over. You know, we saw a lot of the dust get kicked up. I haven't really seen any retirements, but he had a puncture on his left rear after Magnussen pit and after Grosjean has pit a couple of laps later. That elevates us. First of all, we're into the 1 minute 17s and it elevates us into third place. Sebastian Vettel ahead of us for the Ferrari team in second. And of course, Hamilton leads the Grand Prix and we're ahead of both Red Bulls. Seconds. You're losing around seven tenths a lap. They're on old ultra softs. Their tires are seven laps old. We think they've got one more stop. The time last lap was a one minute eighteen point zero. Just wanted to grab a bit of additional information on Vettel, the car ahead of me there, see if he was uh, perhaps planning uh, because he was in a lap early an additional pit stop. But it sounds like similar to ourselves, he's only got one stop left in his strategy. A few laps later, though, the Red Bulls are better on their tyres than us. They're both going to try and attack me. First up, Daniel Ricciardo going to try and take the third position off of me. We haven't really battled Ricciardo that much during this Grand Prix, but just you see the Force India just has that just that edge on top end speed. I'll break a little bit early. Ricciardo went wide, tried to go around the outside of me, wasn't able to make the move stick, and Verstappen has slotted through into fourth position. So now here we go, next lap around. I'm keeping a, a close eye on my fuel. You know, trying to save it in the middle sector and then bump it up to high on the straight because Verstappen with DRS has pulled ahead, pulls across. We're now in a Red Bull sandwich. We're going to go to the outside of turn one. Ricardo could have gone last of the late breakers and made it 3 1, but we sweep all the way around the outside of Verstappen and then lunge it down the inside of turn two. That sets Verstappen potentially into my slipstream, but no move was made. And now we cut to lap 22 as we're in for our second pit stop of the Grand Prix. Verstappen. I believe has already made his stop, so it's Ricardo in and ourselves in. So once again, a battle of the mechanics and a second stop, 2.5 again by the Red Bull boys. And that is us out ahead of Daniel Ricardo. But has Max Verstappen made the undercut work this time around? And indeed he has. So Verstappen pulls ahead of me, as has Kimi Raikkonen by the looks of the red dot there. But Verstappen is on super soft tyres. He pitted so early, or he didn't have enough ultras available. He's gone to super softs for the rest of the race. So we have a tyre advantage. And it looks as if this weekend we're pretty on par with the Red Bulls, you know. Especially over this race pace. So further cars are in for their stop, as you hear. As you hear. Sergio is in, so is Grosjean. Perez coming out in fourth. Verstappen holds third on supers. And I'm pulling Ricardo along with me by the looks of things. So now it's just a, a matter of we've got 13 laps remaining, including the lap we're on. Can we and Daniel Ricardo? catch up to Max Verstappen that is the question Verstappen holds the podium Hamilton and Vettel are long gone but can we get our second podium of the season but our first podium for the Force India team let's have a look as we cross the sector split 2.5 seconds to Max Verstappen and we're on for a personal best lap of the Grand Prix we've set the fastest middle sector of everyone on this lap Vettel does a 16.5 that's going to be the fastest lap of the race but we are on for a very strong personal best as we come through the stadium section back end sliding a little bit too much curb through the penultimate corner then accelerating on the power early through the final corner up towards the line what's the lap time going to be we're into the 16 eights but it's 2.1 to Verstappen he's still got two tenths out of me in that final sector a couple of laps later though and Verstappen's getting more and more visible we're keeping close to our personal best time and it's now only 1.2 to Verstappen and this car is so much better in a straight line back here comes Daniel Ricciardo with Slipstream and DRS is the Red Bull man going to try and make a move into turn one later on the brakes but we use the width of the track to our advantage to keep to the inside of turn two but Ricciardo makes contact through turn three none of us have spun I haven't got any damage I don't know about Daniel Ricciardo let's view it on board from the Red Bull man so you see here this is me sweeping past as I said through turn two Ricciardo got squeezed out and then went for a gap that was always going to close doesn't look like he's got any damage to the front wing 
but he's going to have to reset and try again. And it knocked me off of uh, off of momentum, so now I've got to reset and try again versus Max Verstappen. But this is the first lap we've got DRS against him, so we're going to use all of our fuel, all of our remaining battery, and just look at the closing speed. Come the end of the straight, 214 miles an hour we got to before we had to hit the brakes, and we just weren't close enough to Max Verstappen this time around. Now our acceleration out of turn three has hindered us. We do have DRS. Are we going to be able to make a move, though, down into the next chicane? I don't think we're going to be close enough this time around. No, we are not, but we do set a purple first sector. So the move is coming, and even with the um, the difference in car, it does appear to be more a when, not an if, the move will come. So nine tenths of a second to Verstappen. Here we go, rich and high. We're even going to bump up to overtake this time around just to get that extra bit of speed. If we can versus Verstappen into turn one, no. It's still not possible. We're still too far back from the from the Red Bull driver. And my momentum and my line through the chicane has compromised me. And it's put me into the clutches of Daniel Ricciardo. There's now only nine laps to go in the Grand Prix. And we're still fighting for a potential podium position. I just need to stay as close to Verstappen as possible. And I need to strike him now or sooner rather than later. Because my tyres eventually will run out because they're getting worn quicker than Verstappen super soft tyres. We haven't got DRS against him on lap 29. It's Daniel Ricciardo on the move. And in fact, Sergio Perez appears to be closing in on the pair of us. So this could be an interesting Red Bull versus Force India scrap at the end of the Mexican Grand Prix. But Ricciardo not able to make a move through turn one. I get a much superior line through the chicane of two and three. And we're right back on course up behind Max Verstappen. I've got more battery and a tiny bit more fuel this time around. So here we go, rich and high once again. It's a second to Verstappen. DRS wide open. Daniel Ricciardo pulls out of my slipstream. We're still in the slipstream. Verstappen, we're running out of battery, running out of straight, running out of fuel. We're going to go for it anyway. Big dive bomb move versus the Dutchman. A bit of contact made between wheel and side pod, but... Verstappen left the door open. Frustration got the better of me, and I had to make a move. We can't rest in our laurels, though, as Ricardo has come steaming up our outside up towards the second chicane. We're going to have to be late on the brakes again. Shut the door on exit. Mini can't duck underneath me. He tries round the outside of the uh, second part of the chicane, but no dice for Daniel Ricardo. Job done. P3. Now let's see if we can hold the position as Ricardo on traction tries to get me into the second sector. Ricardo brutally comes into my side pod there. That's potentially a bit of damage to his front wing. And I think it might be because at the uh, end of lap 31, Verstappen's back up to P4. Perez has caught up to them. Ricardo down to P6. He must have made contact with either my side pod or my rear tyre, which thankfully I haven't don't appear to have a puncture with. Um, and in fact, Perez, on his acceleration and top end speed, has got past... Max Verstappen, so instead of me battling the Red Bulls, could it be me battling my teammate Sergio Perez for the podium? And by lap 33, it looks to be the case, as here comes Perez, round my outside. He's got a lap younger super soft tyres, or ultra soft tyres rather, than myself into turn one. Apparently a bit of a collision with Perez, just a bit of wheel banging, nothing too strenuous there. But Perez is definitely going to try and get a podium finish in his home Grand Prix, and rightfully so for the Mexican man, as he's trying again now. Round out outside up towards the second chicane. We're going to have to be really brave on the brakes just here. It looks as if Perez might have the move. He's going to go down the inside. Try and shut the door. Had to turn out the corner. But we got better traction. But Perez still holds it. Down the inside of the double right hand. But again, better traction. Leclerc's out the Grand Prix. And Perez down to fourth. He tries down the inside into sector two. But no. Perez not able to make the move stick. As we try and just looking at how worn our tyres are now, we don't have the grip and the commitment that we did earlier on in the Grand Prix. Now I'm trying to save fuel and battery for the straight. And Perez surges past me going into sector three. We have to defend hard into the stadium section. We've basically been battling for a lap now. Not going to come under pressure through here due to yellow flags, thankfully. But the green flag is going to fly through the final corner. And we haven't been able to save much fuel or battery due to battling. But I'm going to have to use it. Use rich mix, use high on the battery and just pull across. Break the slipstream early. Lap 34 of 36. Three to go. Perez, bit of wheel bang again between both four senior cars. He pulls ahead of me. We're going to have to make the move into turn one late on the brakes. Ride the curb, squeeze him out and then defend through turn two and turn three. That was harsh defending and a late dive bomb move from myself. Are we going to be able 
to keep the move up to the second chicane though because Perez once again is attacking me. I'm now nearly 0.1 under target and I really, really need to try and save some fuel. Otherwise, P3 will not, ha uh, will not matter and will not happen if I run out of fuel. So, we come on to the penultimate lap of the Grand Prix and once again, rich and high fuel mixture onto the uh, onto the straight Perez once again goes past me so I'm just going to duck back into his slipstream one more time and we're going to have to make the move into turn one one more time Perez locks up this time meant I could slow the car down with a bit more stability but Perez then turned in quite nicely almost tried to go around the outside and get the inside for turn three but it didn't work and he's nowhere near as close to me this time around so I'm able to bump it down to lean and low a little bit earlier so I've got a tiny bit more fuel and a tiny bit more battery to defend one more time onto the final lap of the Grand Prix. I've got Verstappen and Ricardo back there waiting for what would appear to be both of us taking each other out to snap up the podium. Perez pulls ahead one more time. We're going to make the move one more time. Perez doesn't defend into turn one. We've gone far deeper than usual, but it looks... Can we defend the line? We have, but we've had a poor run through the chicane. So is Perez... Finally going to get the move done on us up towards the second chicane. He's on the outside line to be defended the inside. Can we get Perez just holding him behind us? But we've got a deficit of fuel that we now desperately need to save through the rest of this lap. Is it going to be possible as we come into the stadium section? The, uh, the fireworks go off showing the Mexican flag colours. But unfortunately for Perez, it's not going to be a Mexican on the podium. Hamilton has won the Grand Prix. Vettel is second. But through fighting tooth and nail, we're going to come across the line for our second podium of the season and our first for Force India. Great drive, great drive. We're really happy with our performance. So as I say that, we can see the drivers coming out now to collect their trophies. It's yet more silverware to take back to their base in Brackley after another excellent Grand Prix. So as I, has, as I said there, Lewis Hamilton wins the Mexican Grand Prix two seconds ahead of Sebastian Vettel. We bring it home third for Force India from seventh on the grid. And then Perez from eighth on the grid up into fourth place in his home Grand Prix. Max Verstappen brings it home fifth uh, on the super soft tyre. Just apparently not having another set of ultra soft tyres to be able to use. Um, to be able to defend his potential third place. Daniel Ricciardo down to sixth there. Carlos Sainz for once being the better Renault in seventh position down there with Kimi Raikkonen. Um, in 8th place. Not too sure what happened to the Finn after being up there quite well. Uh, but he seemed a little bit off the pace in quality and he just dropped down the field with Magnussen and Grosjean uh, finishing up the points for the Haas team. Nico Hulkenberg down in 11th place. Lance Stroll finally having a bit of luck there coming in in 12. Good result for Lance Stroll and only 2 seconds off a potential points paying position with Brendan Hartley in, uh, in 13th. As we're moving over to the driver's standings, so Vettel leads the championship by 29 points versus Lewis Hamilton, who jumps up to second. Now, Raikkonen down to third. Ricciardo moves up to fourth, overtaking Bottas, who had an awful weekend outside of the points there. We move on to 129 points, and Perez overtakes Hulkenberg in the driver's standing. So it is now a Force India driver, 7-8 in the driver's championship, and we're going to want to continue that for the rest of the uh, of the season in the constructor side of things for Sydney now move over 200 points to 205 we are now well clear of Renault so we should be comfortable in our goals and I'm hoping everything stays as it should um, and we're on target for seventh and fourth but let's move on and chat about our race with Claire the fans really seem to enjoy that you made it look easy your team must be ecstatic with how you're performing I should bloody hope so, you know. Dragging them up, clawing them, getting this position. I didn't see Esteban Ocon doing this earlier in the season. You really cut your way through the field today. What was your strategy? The strategy was simple. Just foot to the floor, utilise our top speed advantage and just big dive bombs into turn one. You must be thrilled to be up on the podium. Genuinely, yeah, I felt that this was a Grand Prix where we could actually fight. Um, and, you know, they put the faith in me to be able to perform. 
Things were close between you and your rival, but it looks like you're coming up top, doesn't it? It was a it brought out the best of both of us because it was a it was a strong battle. Um, Appreciate this Grand Prix, time. obviously Perez home Grand Prix, wanting to uh, wanting to show what he could do. So we move in into the rivalries. Of course, we lost our rivalry to Nico Hulkenberg. Um, so we can assign a new one, uh, and we're now leading the rivalry versus Perez because we beat him outright in all potential uh, columns uh, of the of the rivalry standing in his home Grand Prix as well. So sorry, Sergio, but man's uh, man's got to do what man's got to do. If you know what I'm saying. So uh, looks as if we're pretty much maxed out with everyone on the reputation aside from Mercedes. So I mean, they're the team we're trying to impress. We're going to try and get that drive for Mercedes at some point. In the near future, some of our answers have moved us to a bit more sportsman. So that's, you know, I'm being honest with my answers uh, that I give to the media. You know, I'm not trying to, I've said this before, but I'm not trying to shoehorn my way in as a, as a particular attitude preference. Uh, I suppose we'll sort of see as it comes down the line, as the character develops. But for now, just being as honest as possible. But guys, that has been the Mexican Grand Prix. I do hope you have enjoyed. Leave a like if you did with a fierce battle between myself, Sergio Perez for the final podium position beating the Red Bull team. Next time out we have the Brazilian Grand Prix, the penultimate race of the season before we move on over to Abu Dhabi. Any kind of resource points I get for the next few races are just going to be stored up and saved and I'm going to plan a big uh, winter upgrade package as it were to go on the car for Australia season two. So that kind of gives away, you know, I'm looking at driving for Force India again next year, you know. We have the potential. I want to see if I can win with this team next year. That's 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 a, a, a working goal. We'll see how it goes later on. Uh, please subscribe and enable them notifications to never miss an update that comes to the channel. And I will see you all next time.